Hi everybody, Mr. Peacock here, and I just want to say today is a very special day here in Texas. It's very rare that this happens. Uh, Texas has frozen over. That's right, or at least Austin has. You can see right here. Look at the branch. Oh, there we go. So uh, today we're actually talking about things that are special in this video as well. Uh, we're talking about special right triangles. Specifically, we are talking about 45, 45, 90 triangles in this video, or isosceles right triangles. So uh, this is geometry. Special right triangles by me, David Peacock. So we're going to start actually by finding the missing side, just doing a, a bit more Pythagorean theorem like we did last video or the video to before, depending on which order you're watching this in. So I'm going to say, uh, let's see, so that's six squared plus 2 squared, I'm going to say equals c squared. So 36 plus 4 equals c squared. That's 40. Then we have to square root it. Okay, so we have to simplify. So that's 2 times 20, which is 2 times 10, which is 2 times 5. We have a pair of 2s, which means it is 2 square roots of 10 because it is two square roots of, and then we have the two times five, which is still 10. So two square roots of 10 is our side length there. Oh, wait, sorry, ah, I almost forgot. Two square roots of 10 feet. All right, next uh, we're going to do 20 and five. So 20 squared plus five squared equals C squared. So that's 400 plus 25. So 425 equals C squared. I'm going to say 5 times, let's see, 42 would be 85, which is 5 times 17, I believe. Yes. So we have a pair of 5s, which means 5 square roots of 17, which I believe is prime miles. So now let's try this one. Okay, so we have five and five. Now, wait a minute. This is a special, what can we say about this triangle? Well, both of the lines are, both of the sides are equal which means we could also call this isosceles. That also means our base angles are All right, so we have to find the missing side. So let's see, five and five. So five squared, what? Hold on a second. What can we say about this triangle? Well, if both of the sides are equal, then this isn't just a right triangle. It's actually isosceles. And I'm trying to remember what things I know about isosceles. So here were all the rules we learned earlier this year. But let me see, is there anything popping out to me? Hmm. That's right. The base angles are congruent. That means that the uh, two angles that are formed by the two legs and the third side is going to be congruent. Now, not only that, but it's a right triangle. And what do I know about with a right triangle? The two angles are complementary, which means that they add up to be 90. So in this case, the two acute angles of a right triangle are complementary, and the, the acute angles are also congruent. Therefore, the angles of an isosceles right triangle are 45, 45, 90. Which brings us to part one. 45, 45, 90 right triangles. All right, so let's solve this one like we said before. All right, so this is c squared. So five squared plus five squared equals c squared. So that's 25 
plus 25 equals c squared. That's 50. So square root it. That's 2 times 25. 25 is 5 times 5. We have a pair of 5s, leaving us a 2 on the inside. So this is 5 square roots of 2 feet. So we had 5, 5, 5 square roots of 2. Let's try another one just to see. Okay, so wait. I only gave myself one side, but wait, I, if I know that this is 45, then that means that this side over here is also going to be 45. So this is also going to be 8. So let's see, 8 squared plus 8 squared is equal to c squared. So it's 64 plus 64 equals c squared. That's 128 equals c squared. We square root it. That's 2 times 64, which is 8 times 8, which means we have 8 square roots of 2 feet. Let's try this one. Once again, 45, 45, 90. We know that that's 12. So 12 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. 144 plus 144 equals c squared. That's 288 is c squared. We square root it. Hey, that's 2 times 144, which is 12 times 12. That means this is 12 square roots of 2 feet. So, are we seeing a rule? Let's double check it by just trying to do this with just x. So I know that this is going to be x, and so I do x squared plus x squared equals c squared. These combined, that becomes 2. Ooh, gross. Let's rewrite that. 2x squared equals c squared. We square root each side. This is 2 times x squared, which is x times x. Oh, that's a pair, which means it's x square roots of 2. I think I see my pattern. That's right. For 45, 45, 90s, it's x, x, x root 2. So the two sides are congruent. And the hypotenuse is whatever number that is times the square root of 2. That's our rule. Write it down now. Okay, so let's do some quick rapid fire problems. And by rapid fire, I mean however long it takes me to write them. So, all right, this is 17, 17, 17 root 2. I'm not going to write the feet. 4, so 4, 4 root 2. 63. All right, that's weird. 63. Ooh, gross. 63 root 2. The longest time it's just going to be me writing numbers. Okay, that's the same thing as before. Oh, there it is. 5,280. 5,280 square roots of 2. Okay, wait. This one says 5 square roots of 2. Well, wait. That's just the x square roots of 2. So this would be 5 and 5. 6 and 6. 26 and 26. Okay. Um, 6, so... Um, 3? Okay. So this was times the square root of 2, which means just divided by. So 6 over the square root of 2, maybe. Can I do that? Can I? No. Well, then what do I need to do? Rationalize the denominator. All right, so let's talk about it. So if I have something over the square root of 2, here's the problem. We cannot put square roots in the denominator. It doesn't work. You don't put square roots in the denominator. So, it's very, very bad. When you are writing a fraction, you can't leave a radical number, such as a square root, in the denominator. Look, angry face. You have to find a way to get rid of the square root in the denominator. And we call this rationalizing the denominator because we're making an irrational number rational. 
a rational whole number. So to get rid of a, whole, a square root, we multiply it by itself. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. So here's the problem though. Am I allowed to multiply x over the square root of 2 by 1 over the square root of 2? The answer is no, I can't, because that is not the equivalent of 1. What number has to be in the numerator for this right figure to be like I'm multiplying it by 1? That's right, it has to be the square root of 2 as well. The value has to be the same and the numerator and the denominator. So it's now more correct. As we discussed when we went over simplifying radicals, when we multiply a square root or any other number by itself, or of any number or variable by itself, it becomes the number inside the square root. So in this case, the square root of 2 times itself is 2. So we end up getting x square roots of 2 over 2. So if we go back to, the square, to 6, remember this ends up being 6 square roots of 2 over 2, which we would rewrite as 3 square roots of 2. All right, so let's try this one. Remember, it's half of 18. So 9 square roots of 2. All right, five. Ooh. You can write this either as five square roots of two over two or five over two square roots of two. You could also write 2.5 square roots of two if you wanted. Five square roots of two. Wait a second. Okay, so this would be five square roots of two. And then this would be five square roots of two times the square root of two, which means 10. 4 square roots of 6. So this is also 4 square roots of 6. And this becomes 4 square roots of 6 times the square root of 2. So this part right here becomes the square root of 12. 12 is 2 is ooh, sorry, 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. We have a pair of 2s, which means this is now 4 times 2 square roots of 3, or 8 square roots of 3. All right, 8 square roots of 7. So this becomes 4 square roots of 7 times the square root of 2. So 4 square roots of 14. And that's what I write over here as well. And that's it. That's all that we really need to know for this video. That is 45, 45, 90s. So what I'm going to ask you all to do right now is like and subscribe and there you are all right thank you all very much i'll see you all next time in geometry